So, hi again. Welcome to the last mini lecture on relativity and cosmology for the winter term. We have actually finished our program and uh, what I do here now in uh, 15 minutes is to give you a brief review and a brief outlook uh, on what will be the, uh, the topics in the summer and also in later lectures. So, here you see again the list of uh, chapters that I wrote to you at the beginning and you, there's a division line of how far I came in the winter. Actually I wanted to do one chapter more but uh, this chapter will be done in the summer so there's no problem. So what did I do I mean in these eight chapters? I mean we deal with general relativity. This is Einstein's theory of gravity which interprets gravity as an expression of the geometry and it's a geometry of space-time, of a four-dimensional space-time. So space and time are unified. This was already the case in special relativity, but the new thing, it's, it becomes dynamical. It's not just the background on which the fields and particles move and play and which is fixed. No, it's a part of the game and it becomes dynamical. It influences the fields and the particles and the fields and the particles influence back the gravitational field. So that's the, I mean, big and really um, pioneering achievement of, of relativity. And so far, um, that's the best theory of gravity we have. So it's important to study this theory in detail. Uh, there's no single fact known that would definitely point beyond relativity. There are some facts that are not yet fully understood. I mean, like energy, um, like matter, but uh, there's no proof yet that you have to go beyond Einstein's theory to understand them. Future will show about this. So I first gave, because it's a geometry of space-time, a brief history of space-time. So from Newton um, to Einstein, uh, or at least to special relativity, um, Newton, absolute space-time, there were alternatives from Leibniz, but they were not really appreciated at that time uh, until special and general relativity. Now, the classic theory of gravity is, of course, the Newtonian gravity, which we all learn already in school and which interprets gravity as a force that acts instantaneously between any two bodies in the universe, the famous inverse square law, which is not comparable to the dynamic geometry of uh, general relativity but of course general relativity has to give back Newtonian gravity in the limit and this is why I spent some details here uh, on this and especially we have here the Poisson equation the Laplace phi, phi is the Newtonian potential is 4 pi g times the mass density and this of course equation must be recovered from general relativity and it is recovered as I showed later. Then of course I have had to say something about special relativity um, also for the first for the concepts of unifying space and time but also for the formalism of four-dimensional vectors and tensors that will be generalized to um, general relativity. I mean here we have a symmetry group called the Poincaré uh, group which is the Lorentz uh, group and uh, the trans space-time translations and the Lorentz group are the boosts and the rotations. Um, so this was the topic of three. Then I motivated actually from already from within special relativity that we need to go beyond. Um, and this was the equivalence principle and that this equivalence principle, which states the equiv local equivalence of acceleration and uh, gravity, then motivated us to really regard uh, gravity as a, an effect, a local effect of geometry. So this I discussed here, but um, because space-time is four-dimensional, we cannot easily have intuition and visualization about this. We need to have an efficient formalism. And this is the formulation of differential geometry and I presented here in this part one 
the classic formulation that was developed by Riemann, Ritchie and others and used by Einstein in 1915 and which we still have to know, I mean, for, for example, understanding the literature but also for doing some calculations. Then the central chapter certainly is the central, is the chapter six where I presented Einstein's field equations and discussed their structure and uh, discussed the linear approximation out of which also the Newtonian approximation evolved. So we have really a continuous uh, line from the general theory of relativity to the linearized approximation and to Newtonian gravity. The last two chapters in the winter were devoted to special solutions and of course important are gravitational waves. So these are solutions of pure vacuum, pure space time. Um, they propagate at the speed of light and they have been observed both indirectly with a double uh, with binary pulsars and also directly in the last uh, five or six years. Um, and uh, there's an ongoing search for for gravitational waves um, detection because this gives a window to uh, a new window to the universe independent of, of, of electromagnetic radiation. The Schwarzschild so solution is a solution um, that holds outside a spherically symmetric body and um, generalizes the Newtonian potential minus gm over r, the 1 over r potential. And uh, the Schwarzschild solution is one, if not the most important solu exact solution in relativity because many objects are approximately spherically symmetric and so you can use the solution at least f to high accuracy um, outside that, that those bodies, especially in the solar system. Now, this brings me now to um, the summer term, which will start the uh, mid of April. And um, the first one is uh, a very important chapter, namely the discussion of the classic tests of general relativity. And uh, I emphasize there, of course, also the uh, need for empirical justification, of course, of physical theories. And um, so what we do here is we, um, we study the gravitational redshift that was already studied here because it follows from the equivalence principle, but it, now we study it from the point of view of the Schwarzschild solution. And then we discuss the motion of uh, light and of uh, massive particles in the Schwarzschild uh, space-time. No? And so um, the, the massive solutions describe the motion of the planets around the sun or of moons around the planets. And for that purpose, we solve the geodesic equation and uh, calculate effects. And the two most famous effects here are the deflection of flight and the perihelion motion of the planet, especially Mercury, because for the innermost planet Mercury, this effect is biggest. And it was important for Einstein himself because there was an anomalous motion in that planet that was not understood before Einstein. And it was then seen as an important effect of general relativity. So all of this, and we, we discuss a few other tests, um, are presented in this chapter nine. Then we return to uh, mathematics. So this chapter 10 uh, again goes through the material of chapter five, but from a more modern angle. So in the 1920s, there was a new formulation going back mainly to uh, Carton that uses differential forms. And um, I will give you an introduction into this. I mean, the introduction, of course, tailored to our needs of relativity, not to, I mean, the, the, the field is, is huge. And I will then show you how to also do yeah, concrete calculations. So, so not only understanding conceptual issues, but also doing calculations. For example, if you have given an ansatz for a line element and for the met, and for the met then really calculate um, the Christoffel symbols and the curvatures and the Einstein tensors and to have a shortcut to the Einstein field equations for those models. So we shall do it then for the Schwarz to actually then derive the Schwarzschild solution, which was here more or less given. And also to discuss, I mean, a line element that will be later used in cosmology. 
So 11 and especially 12 are two longer chapters, especially 12, with important applications of Einstein's theory. So we discuss relativistic stars and black holes. So relativistic stars are very compact objects for which you have to use relativity to understand them. So Newtonian gravity is insufficient. And so these are mainly white dwarfs and neutron stars. And the most extreme case, of course, is a black hole, where the whole of um, matter is, in a sense, squeezed out of our universe, and uh, an empty space-time remains that is so compact that not, on, that not even light can escape. So this is a fascinating subject, and uh, I mean, uh, there are many examples in the universe, for example, the center of our Milky Way is a giant black hole and uh, the Nobel Prize of last year was awarded to the study of this um, supermassive black hole. So this is an important topic, especially for astronomy. And the last uh, chapter, which is uh, also a bit longer chapter, and it's also here the title because it's so important, um, cosmology, the application of Einstein's theory to the universe as a whole. And there we, sh we shall see, I mean, how we can really understand the um, past and also possible future of the evolution of our universe, starting from the Big Bang, then to various um, ages up to the present and, and the future. So it seems that our universe is um, expanding and doing so in an accelerated way and we have an increasing number of observations and all of this will be discussed here. Okay, this will finish then by end of July, um, the summer uh, term, on, uh, and will give you then a full account of uh, the topic relativity. But of course there are still interesting applications and uh, topics and also extensions and they will be covered in two further lecture courses for those of you, of course, who have interest and want to specialize. So there is in the next winter a course on the early universe and in the summer 2022 on quantum gravity. So early universe, of course, it can be attended in a self-contained way, but it's a natural um, continuation of here this chapter on cosmology. So we will mainly apply so particle physics to the early universe, which is, they say the first three minutes of the uh, cosmic evolution, and especially of a very early phase called inflation that is at the center of present discussion because we believe that all the structure in the universe, galaxies, galaxy classes, emerge from quantum fluctuations during inflation. So this will be um, discussed in detail in, in the winter. And of course, I mean, I emphasized here, it seems to be that uh, classical general relativity is so far perfect, but for there are general arguments that um, point to the need for a quantum theory of gravity. No? Recall that all other theories of fundamental interactions that we have in physics are quantum theories or quantum field theories, um, quantum electrodynamics, um, of course the standard model which has um, electro electrodynamics combined with the weak interaction to the electroweak uh, interaction and also strong interaction. They are quantum field theories. So it seems that only gravity so far stands apart and uh, is described successfully for uh, um, uh, with a classical theory. But there are m many reasons and even some indirect empirical reasons that point uh, to the need of a fundamental quantum theory of gravity, which is not complete yet. So, um, whereas here I think we have um, established knowledge and also uh, certainly most of this year's established knowledge in quantum gravity, we go to the forefront of current research and I point out where we stand and what are the major lines. Okay, so far um, for this um, brief review and outlook, I hope of course that many of you will also join for the second part of the lecture course and um, in the summer it's planned also to do recordings but if it allows uh, we will also maybe have um, a discussion session um, live in presence but this we cannot know at present. So before I finish 
Um, I also would like to thank my PhD student, Yifan Wang, who has spent a lot of work and effort to make these video recordings and to do them in a in a such a nice way that you can um, see clearly and understand clearly so that at least you see him once maybe you find you come here okay thank you very much Yifan and so bye bye to all of you and see you again hopefully in person sometime